Sid Mike in the 110th Apple Cup. Washington State in Washington. And it is senior day here at Husky Stadium. That's going on right now for this senior class that has never dropped the game to its in-state rival. Four consecutive wins for Washington over Wazoo. Top 20 matchup this time around and a lot at stake. If Washington State wins, they head to their first Pac-12 championship game. Washington, meanwhile, with a win would put Stanford into next Friday's matchup with USC. With that, we say welcome inside. Joe Davis, Brady Quinn, Bruce Feldman joins us in a moment. Been playing this game a long time, back to 1900. This is only the seventh time both teams have been ranked. It's about as good as it gets for this rivalry right here. There's no doubt about it. And for Washington State, you saw what's on the line for them in regards to the Pac-12, but it's also the fact that this is a Washington State team that doesn't have a player on the roster that's beaten Washington. I think they'd like to end tonight on a different note. And for Washington, they haven't had back-to-back 10-win -back seasons since over 25 years ago. And besides that, when you're a senior, you're playing at home for your final game, you don't want to end on a loss. So for really a lot on the line for both teams. And we get a chance tonight, Brady, to see two of the nation's best quarterbacks. Let's start off with Luke Falk, Washington State's quarterback, who is the all-time leading passer in this conference. To me, it comes down to the three T's for Luke Falk as far as what makes him so effective. The first is touch. He's got an uncanny ability to throw the football into windows that most quarterbacks in college football don't have the ability to do. The next part is the timing. He's been in this offense for a long time. He's got a great feel for when his wide receivers are coming out of the routes. The ball's there on time, on the money. And finally, it comes down to his toughness. Luke Falk's got a lot of grit. He's been sacked more than any quarterback in the Pac-12, but he continues to deliver. He gets up after those tough hits, and he still finds ways of being productive. On the other side, it's Jake Browning, who has not duplicated the numbers from his Pac-12 Player of the Year campaign last year, but he's still one of the nation's best. Yeah, and part of that's been the fact that John Ross has left. He's gone to the NFL. Dante Pettis has taken over, but really it's their loss on the offensive line. Left tackle Trey Adams. Some of it's been him trying to scramble because of the pressure that he's had, and he's still accurate even outside the pocket. You can see this in the final moments of their win over Utah, but some of it's by design as well. This is the first play of their game, and you can see they want to move him outside the pocket where he's a little more safe, but he still has that pinpoint accuracy, the back shoulder to Pettis for the big game. Won't be easy for either of those guys because these are the top two defenses in the Pac-12. That's nothing new for Washington. Washington State, though, this is a new thing, playing some defense as we send it down to Bruce. Joe, when Michael Leach hired Alex Grinch to be his defensive coordinator, nobody knew anything about him. Grinch said that's kind of an advantage, he said, because you get to set the bar, you get to do what you want to do. And what he does and his M.O. is a lot of speed and a lot of pre-snap movement. He said it's a lot of smoke and mirrors and giving people the impression that they're doing a lot more than they do, and that's a great equalizer. And that's why they have the best defense Mike Leach has had since he's been a head coach. The big thing for him, though, is Washington does a lot of pre-snap movement, too. And he said that's gotten the best of us the last couple of times. And it's very easy to get vanilla when you face this Washington team. And he goes, that's a me problem. I got to do what we do and what makes us really good. And I got to remember to stay aggressive. The Cougars one win away from a trip to the Pac-12 championship game. It's Washington and Washington State in the Apple Cup coming up. The 110th meeting in a series that goes back to 1900, and it's only the seventh time both teams have been ranked. First time back-to-back -back seasons they've both been ranked. Lately, Washington's dominated, winning four in a row and seven of the last eight. Now, uh, tonight, with the rain falling and the temperature in the high 40s, Washington State won the toss, deferred to the second half. And so the Huskies will have it to start. Savan Ahmed, the freshman, back to return Eric Powell's kick. Yeah, 
And off we go from Seattle. Ahmed thought about it, then took an E. And so Washington will start at the 25-yard line. They've been slowed by some key injuries, but still number two in the Pac-12, averaging 37 points per game. And well, we talked about Jake Browning off of the top. Numbers not quite what they were, but still been a really good season. Well, it's hard to meet up to that standard that he set last year. He talked about it in the open. John Ross, from the first-round pick, he's no longer here anymore. Dante Pettis has stepped in his place. But it's really been the second wide receiver that's been the struggle for Washington and not so much due to production due to injury a number of guys who really stepped up whether it was Quinton Pounds or tight end Hunter Bryant and those guys went down with injuries so all of a sudden the passing game didn't quite look the same they lost Chico McClatcher as well he lost lost his left tackle and Trey Adams and starting this one from the 25 yard line with a LeVon Coleman run the two running backs that'll see time for the dogs with Miles Gaskin as well. Coleman getting the start on his senior night and a gain of six. I suspect you're going to see a heavy dose of run from Washington for a couple of reasons. You heard Bruce Feldman talk about how much this Washington State defensive front likes to move around before the snap, literally after the snap. Kind of slow that down. Running the football helps eliminate some of that. Gaskin in now, and you see some of that pre-stat movement from the Cougars. Gaskin downhill with a seam, and a first down to the 48. Back-to-back -back running plays to start for Washington. This one breaks for 17. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Watch as they slant. Look at the seam that's created on the right side. And that's exactly the danger that you put yourself in when you're a defense that likes to move at the snap of the football. If you don't have sound run gap integrity, all of a sudden you can open up some big seams. Coleman back in for Gaskin. On first down from the 48, Browning's first throw of the day. At least the first pass play called. He'll tuck it and get pounded after a gain of five or six by Isaac Dotson. Boy, he's, uh, he's taken some hits the last couple of weeks, huh? Yeah, he's had to. And again, he's been more mobile. The protection hasn't been quite the same as what it was when Trey Adams, their left tackle, is in the game. Some of the criticism, too, has been he's maybe held on the football too long. But again, the explanation, besides Dante Pettis, they haven't really found that second option in the passing game to get separation. Jake Brown is going to try to make a play when he has the opportunity to do so. Gaskin. Spins off initial contact, finishes forward for a short gain. Turned a loss into a gain of two, setting up third and short on Washington's first drive. You see the counter to why you like to slant or have games if you're a defense. It confuses the offensive lineman. They have to adjust at the snap of the football as far as who their assignment is. Now you see this Wildcat formation with Miles Gaskin. Running behind Coleman, Miles Gaskin fighting his way for a first down. Second effort got it for him. Washington converts its first third down of the night. Watch the penetration from Hercules Mata'afa. He's going to get through, but not able to get to Gaskin in time. He's so quick off the ball. He's not the biggest. He's only 6'2", 250 pounds, but talking with the coaching staff before they said when he goes up against those 300 pound offensive linemen it never enters his mind how much smaller he is than the guys he's going up against one of the leading candidates for Pac-12 defensive player of the year they stick in the Wildcat Gaskin again breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage and manages a yard and a half with Jihad Woods making the stop for Washington State Nick Begg he got in the backfield kind of all of a sudden started Gaskin or made him stop his feet and have to cut it back up Offensive coordinator Jonathan Smith for Washington likes to throw in a big mix of things on his first drive. We see Wildcat, we see a mixture of personnel groupings. It puts a lot of pressure on the defense to adjust. Browning's back in, more traditional set for second and nine. Quickly outside they go. Savan Ahmed, the freshman, dragging a defender to the 30 with a first down. This is the sort of play design that you love if you're a quarterback. An easy completion, but look at the two tight ends out in space. Two big bodies now leading the way for Ahmed. Easy completion, easy yards after the catch. Right here in Kirkland, Washington. One of the many kids playing in this game that grew up in this rivalry. 
means so much to so many. 110th time these teams have faced off. On first down from the 30, here's Gaskin again. Bounces to the outside. Now cuts it against the grain. And Miles Gaskin, who has three consecutive 1,000 yard seasons, has a dozen and a Washington first down. And this is one of the things that makes Gaskin so special. Freeze it right there. Look at this space. He's got the vision to be able to see the backside cut and pick up the additional yards. You know, the majority of his yards come outside the tackles, but for as small as he is, he's tough to see once he gets back behind that big offensive line, and all of a sudden he pops out. He's incredibly difficult to tackle in space. And he's got such great vision. If there is a hole, he's going to find it. Browning off play action, finds Pettis, his first catch of the day. Dante Pettis, you, know, you talk about the question being who's the number two for Washington. There is no doubt who number one is. No, and you see one of the reasons that makes him so special is he's good on the double move routes, the big plays. We all know about him as a special teams return man, but it's the tough catches, the ones across the middle, like on the last play. He doesn't mind taking the hit and making the tough catch. Right now, this drive for Washington, they've got everything going. If you're Washington State, you've got to do something to stop the bleeding. So in the 10th play of this opening drive, we gave him enough for a first down. So first and goal from the seventh. Fake to Coleman. Browning steps up, flips it forward to a crossing. Pettis is popped out of the two. Isaac Dotson stopped him, second and goal. Jake, Jake Browning, there is no spot yet that he's been better than down here. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, if you talk about taking care of the football, zero interceptions in his career. I mean, you're giving yourself the opportunity to always come away with points. That's something that's just invaluable to any head coach. I talked to Chris Peterson about Jake Browning. I mean, he, he loves this young man, but it's the decision making, I think, that makes him so special. You know, oddly, last week in that comeback win against Utah, they had to settle for a couple of field goal attempts when they got down here. Second and goal, here comes Gaskin for a Washington touchdown. 11 play drive to start the score in Seattle. His 16th touchdown of the season. And that was just physical domination by the Washington offensive line against the Washington State defensive line. Tristan Vizcano, who had a missed extra point last week before the game winner, adds this one and a 7 0 lead for Washington as Miles Gaskin gets his score record 40th touchdown of the year. Washington State's aerial attack takes the field after this. You talked about Jonathan Smith liking to show a little bit of everything on his opening drive. He had ample opportunity there. 11 plays, 75 yards to get in the end zone. Well, another thing is time of possession. Hit up six minutes on that drive, and pretty significant when you think about the fact that that's more of Washington State's game. Right. Lead the Pac-12 in time of possessions for a prolific passing offense. You don't think about them taking up a lot of time on the clock, but Washington obviously trying to shorten the game and limit the amount of opportunities Luke Falk gets with the football. James Williams back to return Vizcano's kick. And Washington State will start at the 25 yard line. The number three passing offense in the country. Luke Falk, the Pac 12's all time leading passer. I think the biggest thing that stands out about Luke Falk, we talked about his toughness, his touch, his timing. It's how he spreads the football around as well. I mean, he really does operate this system within Mike Leach's air raid offense as good as any quarterback that's probably played in the system. Eight players with 20 or more receptions. That's the most in the country. You know, most teams talk about balance run pass. Mike Leach looks at it as parts of the field and different guys involved in the passing attack. And for a relatively inexperienced group when you talk about what they had returning from last year. Lost Gabe Marks, Lost River Craycraft, Robert Lewis down with an injury in preseason camp. A lot of targets have emerged 
We talk about all that, and then they start in the ground with Morrow running for four. They will wrap with a stop, second and six. They're going to need to run the football, especially as the rain continues to come down. It's, it's not a heavy rain. There's not too much wind. Wind is more really what affects your ability to throw the football. But they need to provide that balance. They can't let this Washington defense all of a sudden tee off on Luke Falk. Against a three-man rush, Falk has time. He goes underneath incomplete. So third down coming up for Mike Leach's offense. Sixth season as the head man. You know, they were 9 and 40 the four years prior to his arrival. I mean, it's incredible to think what he's been able to bring to this program. But in this matchup, he struggled, in particular to, to get off to a fast start. I mean, they haven't scored a force, first quarter touchdown in Husky Stadium in this matchup since 2007. Good luck hearing. That's a delay. There are not too many places in the country louder than this one when it gets going. Delay game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. For a team that plays about as fast as anyone in the Pac 12, referring to Washington State. Clearly the way to slow them down is put them in more third and long scenarios We've got to all of a sudden talk a little bit more about the situation possibly change personnel Tough tough to convert though when you're in this long of a distance with this noise it really gives an advantage to the pass rush Rushing only four this time still able to get home Falk goes down with a flag down Vita Vea, Ryan Bowman were both there. Let's see what the call is. Holding. Offense number 69. That penalty is declined. Brings up fourth down. And so one of the nation's top defenses has a three and out to open. Well, here's the matchup right here. That's Vita Vea working on Maui Noah. And, and he's doing all he can to help protect Luke Falk. He's been sacked more than any quarterback in the Pac-12 this year. And it's not as bad as the stat looks. Because actually, when you think about how many times they drop back to throw the football, they're about middle of the pack. I mean, they throw the football by far and away more than anyone. But those are the sorts of situations, if you're Washington State, you can't put yourself in. Dante Pettis now, one of the great returners in the history of college football. Washington State was ready for him. Kyle Selly, the snapper, made the tackle, and Pettis slow to get up. Training staff coming out to take a look at Washington's leading receiver, senior leader Dante Pettis. Football is sponsored by Dodge Domestic, not domesticated, and by King's Hawaiian Foods, irresistible since 1950. Dante Pettis helped off of the field. Into the injury tent. He's been the one sure thing among the receivers for Washington this year and injured on this punt return. Watch that left ankle. I believe that is what the medical staff was looking at. Got up gingerly, went into the, the tent, and, and here's the tough part. That's your leading wide receiver, by far and away your best wide receiver and playmaker. Washington's one and two when Browning doesn't throw a touchdown pass. Browning steps into this one, hit as he throws and incomplete. Off of Aaron Fuller. Yeah, so to your point, Pettis came into the game with 38 more catches than anybody else on the team. Leads the team in touchdown receptions. And when they need a play, that's typically who they look to. You know, they'll do shots downfield on post routes, go routes, sometimes double moves as well. And I think that's the tough part is you not only don't have that playmaker on offense, but not on special teams either. I mean, a little bit easier task for Mike Leach's crew of Washington State not having to punt to Pettis if he can't come back. Here's Gaskin, blown up and swallowed for a loss of a yard. Namdi Oguayo is the first man there, and it's third and long. They're not very big up front, but they are quick. 
and they're able to get penetration right at the snap of the football. And again, it's somewhat by design. You see how they move at the snap of the football. It makes it tougher for guys to then put themselves in position to make their blocks. They call that getting on edges. Washington State gets on the edge of a lot of the offensive linemen tight ends in the running game and they're able to find ways of getting the back. But that's how they get all those negative plays. Yeah, number two in the country in tackles for loss. Number three in the country in takeaways. One of the nation's most disruptive units. Bringing five here. Browning to the sideline. One on one. It's incomplete with the coverage from Sean Harper. Washington wanted a flag. Won't get it. And fourth down coming up. Here's the coverage. One on one. And it's tight. I mean, Harper is all over him. But the way the ball is thrown, it's going to force Bocelli to come back to him and try to make a play. It's because he's got that left Bear arm wrapped him. around him already. Kind of surprising you, you didn't see a flag, but again, that's the absence of Pettis. A little bit bigger wide receiver. Maybe he can get more separation and makes that play. Joel Whitford to Jamal Morrow. Makes a catch on the run and goes down immediately. Pretty good punt coverage in this game so far. Dante Pettis headed to the locker room. Washington State with the ball on the other side of this break. You know, Washington State found itself in a pretty similar situation last year coming into this Apple Cup. Ranked matchup. If they win, they advance to the Pac-12 championship game. But much like the previous couple of years, they got blown out. 45-17 the final score in Pullman. It was over before they even got to halftime. Chris Peterson's team had a 28-3 lead after one. Three and out on their opening drive. This one begins from the 32. Falk scan in the field and sack for the second time. This time it's Tevis Bartlett. This is by design if you're Washington. Defensive coordinator Pete Kwiatkowski knows that he's got the horses up front to be able to eventually put pressure on the quarterback because of the coverage in the backfield. There's not many defenses that can send three guys off to the NFL and be able to replenish that yeah. and play the type of defense like Washington can. And three second round picks out of the secondary. Then they've dealt with injuries there. Still one of the nation's best. Falk into coverage and incomplete. A dangerous throw in Jameer Calvin's direction. Third and 18. Calvin was in the vicinity, so was Martin. They both tried to make a play on the football. This is some of the struggles that we've seen from Washington State early on in games versus Washington. The inability to get things going, putting themselves behind the sticks in third and long. I don't care who you are. It's just hard to be able to convert. It's hard to be able to sustain drives. Especially when you know Washington's teeing off with three and four rushing and still getting home. Third down and a mile, and he just barely gets rid of it in time to Isaiah Johnson Mack. That's caught across the 35, but still well short. That just add yards to the punt. But that's about as pretty as you, you can see in college football as far as the timing of the play. Falk getting the ball out on time to the outside, allowing the wide receiver to come back and make the catch in the game. Need some of that in the beginning of these drives. You need to have more success on first down. Two, three and outs to start. Was a heck of a punt from Eric Powell his first time. Fifth year senior from Vancouver, Washington. Boomed at 55 the first time. This has a much different look. As Aaron Fuller watches it bounce by with Dante Pettis back in the locker room. This thing rolls all the way down to the one yard line. Take a bow, Eric Powell. 55 on his first one, 64 to the doorstep here. Fox College football is sponsored by Masterpass, the simple, secure way to pay from your bank online and on your phone. Senior day in Seattle. Dante Pettis 
Honored before the game. They had a reception earlier on, but then injured on a punt return, and this is a big deal. Not just their leading receiver, but there is a huge drop off to the next guy. Which means there's going to be more pressure put on the running game. Whether that's Levon Coleman or Miles Gaskin, both of those guys are going to have to step up. And someone's got to step up on the outside of wide receiver. They're backed into their own end zone after the 64 yard Powell punt. They run play action for Browning. Into the flats he goes for Drew Sample, the tight end for a gain of five. And we check in with Bruce Feldman. Joe, when they took Dante Pettis into the injury tent, they actually didn't retape his left ankle, and he walked into the locker room, albeit gingerly, under his own power, where he's being further evaluated, and we'll see if we can get an update from there. All right, Bruce. Look, as a former player, it's never a good sign when you've got to go into the locker room. Clearly, you want to get a better opportunity to examine what exactly is going on. I'm not saying he won't come back into this game, but they were able to tape that up. He was able to go in there and play. Different story. Second and five. Ron Coleman spins off of Moulton's tackle and gallops across the 15. And Levon Coleman is hurt. This is unbelievable what Washington is dealing with on the offensive side of the ball. We mentioned earlier, talked about all the wide receivers and even tight end and Hunter Bryant. They've been stepping up. So we go back and take another look. And I mean, that's just incredibly unfortunate, obviously. And you could see as Coleman was about ready to put his foot down, Washington State defender landed on his ankle awkwardly. So Pettis and Coleman on their senior day both helped into the injury tent. Gaskin out of the short side. It'll be second down after this game break with Greg Wolf. All right, Joe, thanks. If UW wins the Apple Cup, Stanford takes the Pac-12 North. Right now, though, they're trying to slow down number eight Notre Dame. Brandon Wimbush hooks up with Kevin Stepperson. He goes 83 yards for the score. Notre Dame leads seven to nothing first quarter. Irish looking for their 10th win this season. Joe Brady, back to you. Any chance they climb back into the discussion? I think it, a lot of things would need to happen. I think you'd have to start having a lot of two, three loss conference champions. I don't think that's going to be the case. Fake to Gaskin. Browning floats, floats one down the sideline, and it's broken up by Moulton. Area Moulton with the coverage, third down six. Washington is going to have to take these shots to try to soften up this Washington State defense. Look how many people are down around the line of scrimmage. They know the predicament that they're in right now without their star wide receiver. And that's just good coverage. Bottom line, Darian Moulton was with Bowler step for step. They rotate in their quarterbacks at Washington State, but they all do a really good job. Third and six. Browning setting up the screen, and it is shut down. Daniel Quale, the nose, made the tackle. And they bring the punt team out. And look, I would have liked a screen in that scenario, but not, not to Will Disley. And it's nothing, it's not the dis Disley. It's just the fact that he's not as explosive of a player as Miles Gaskins and running back. Now, maybe Coleman would have been the other player we would have thought about out of the backfield, but we already saw him walk off earlier this drive with an injury. Limit your play calling ability. Woodford's second punt. It's a good one. Fair catch from Jamal Morrow. Puts it on the deck and then gets back on it. So the Cougars dodge a bullet there and will have her to the 25 yard line. Started this season 6 and 0 oh, at that signature win over USC on a Friday night in September. Then dropped two of three. An inexplicable blowout loss at Cal. Lost at Arizona. Before winning the last two. Stanford and Utah both going down. Washington State sitting at 9 and 2. Will clinch their first trip to the Pac-12 championship game with a win today. Last time they shared a conference title 02. Last outright conference title 1930.
Still looking for their first first down of the night. They shovel it off to James Williams. And Williams stays on his feet and crosses the 45. The sophomore from Burbank, California, goes for 22. You only got three defensive linemen. They're dropping eight in coverage, which allows them to find the seam for the shovel pass and really allows you to set up blocking on the second level downfield. Then it's just Williams the rest of the way, keeping his feet and running tough. Underneath, Kyle Sweet. Driven down by Keyshawn Bieria after six, second and four. That's a staple of any Mike Leach offense, any air raid offense. You're going to see a lot of shallow crossers. Easy completions for the quarterbacks. A lot of times they'll, they'll be a mesh, meaning they'll be able to run one another off versus man-to-man -man coverage. Here's Morrow with a big hole and a first down. Jamal Morrow, team captain. More than 4,000 all-purpose yards in his career. And really, when you put together the few running backs that they use, it's a productive group. Yeah, and look, this is always going to be a pass-first offense. They run just enough to keep you on your heels. And they don't allow you to kind of go to tee off with them on their tendencies. And when you've got an, a defensive line that's able to rush up field like Washington can, it's going to create some scenes when they run the draws, which is very effective. Williams back in on first down. Falk all day, but the coverage downfield leads to a sack for the freshman. Levi Onzerike. It's already the third Washington sack of the night. And this is once again a coverage sack. There's nowhere to throw the football. Washington State runs somewhat of a simple offense, meaning they run the same play over and over and over again, and they just expect to out-execute you Washington's got a beat on everything Washington State's been trying to do so far in the passing game in this first quarter. Second and 20. Again, they drop eight into coverage. Falk letting it fly into coverage and picked off. JoJo McIntosh headed the other way. And the dogs will have it in Washington State territory. Bad things happen for Washington State when Luke Paul holds on to the football too long. And JoJo McIntosh was reading his eyes the entire way. The defense shifted to play more of what's called a three cloud, meaning you've got three defenders responsible for deep thirds, and then you've got guys who are responsible for the Colonel Flat. There's really nowhere to throw this football, and you can't miss over the top in that case. This has been what's plagued Washington State throughout the course of the last three matchup between these two teams is the turnovers and giving Washington State, or excuse me, giving Washington good field position and the momentum. See what the dogs do with it with the first down from the 45. Gaskin pulled down at the line of scrimmage by Frankie Louvu. And Washington State's first quarter struggles in the Apple Cup continuing. Now the last five plus years getting outscored 52 to nine in the first quarter and like you mentioned that is no touchdowns under Mike Leach in the first quarter against Washington. Well, it's been a decade in this matchup since they've scored a touchdown here in Seattle. Alex Brink to Frisch neck for a 41 yard touchdown 10 years ago. I mean it's, it's ridiculous to think that they've just had slow starts time and time again. In seconds in this opening quarter. Outside they go, Bocelli, who's got a run down the sideline, but a flag down. This is coming back. Bocelli tackled to the five. But this will come back. Braden Lenius with a block on the edge, and he got a little too much of the shirt. Washington loves putting those bigger bodies on the outside to help kind of lead block on their screens. Holding. Offense number 81, 10-yard penalty, second down. Right here. And he's just going to try to take two. And unfortunately, he's got kind of extended there, and maybe they feel like it exposed that ha hand grabbing onto the jersey. It's tough to tell from this angle. I thought he did a pretty good job. Yeah. Where was Marcellus Pippins going? 
In that case, again, you're just trying to kind of create leverage, meaning one guy for the outside, one guy for the inside, but I'm, I'm not sure exactly what he saw that made him cut like that. It wipes away a 36-yard gain and brings his first quarter to a close. The 110th meeting in a series that goes back to 1900. Washington trying to play spoiler as Washington State has its sights set on the Pac-12 championship. During the break, they honored Bob Rondo's broadcasting his final game as voice of the Huskies today. 37 years in that role and it is officially by proclamation Bob Rondo day in Seattle today. Congratulations to Bob on a fantastic career. Now it's in his final Apple Cup today. Second quarter begins with a second and 18 for Washington and this is a free play for Jake Browning throwing back shoulder for the freshman Ty Jones who's got it across the 45. They're excited about getting Ty Jones more involved in the offense and that was even before Dante Pettis went down. Now you're forced to uh, and he, someone's gonna have to step up and in particular on third down because when you look at who they target the outside most, defense number 51 that penalty is declining result of the play third down when you look at who they target the most on third down it's Dante Pettis and then it's actually the running backs Levon Coleman's in that mix he's out as well and then, then Miles Gaskin so someone's gonna have to step up we'll see what they go to on third down here yeah especially last week Miles Gaskin was huge in the pass game what a 76 yard touchdown doubled his season total receiving Cougars bring heat. Browning throws too tall for Jones with a coverage from Harper. And again, the crowd puts a flag, and again, they won't get it. Fourth down. Just a simple stop route. Here's the matchup. Watch Sean Harper. We saw earlier in the game a lot of tugging and pulling going on. Throw a little bit high. That's the toughest thing for Jake Browning is he's got to adapt. What do you think is quick kick? They've been known to do this before. Yeah. Pretty traditional dab. No, that's going to be a quick get dead giveaway. Well done. Browning rolls this one out of bounds at the one. Andre Bocelli down there to help him on a 40 yard punt to put Washington State at its own one yard line. And this is tough to do. You get a couple reps to do it in practice, but the coverage is the biggest key. Bocelli. Coming in big. How about them apples? Nice. Luke Falk under constant siege in this game so far. Already sacked three times. He's been hit three more times and hurried three others. And in this area of the field, it's going to be loud. So he's got to make sure he takes care of the football. Already thrown one interception so far tonight. Back to the one. Washington brings some heat. Falk throws underneath, and he's got a wide open Tavares Martin Jr. His leading receiver on the season gets him some breathing room for the pickup at 22. This is pretty typical. You're going to see the motion man come across. You're going to see some guy come flat and a guy go deep. They try to manipulate each level of the defense to find someone open. And as a quarterback, you just read it bottom up. Short guy, middle guy, long guy. And in that case, we saw Martin be able to find the open space in the big game. Back-to-back 60-catch -back seasons for Tavares Martin. Junior from Belle Glade, Florida. Here's Renard Bell, the freshman, cuts it upfield. Into the arms of Ben Burkirvin on a gain of seven. This is a guy that Mike Leach and this Washington State staff really likes. Only 5'8", 160 pounds, but pretty talented. They called him the most improved player from a year ago, and typically it's talking about a guy saying that he wasn't that good, but no, they said he was very good. A couple good players playing in front of him, but he's just improved that much since last year. Empty set on second and short. Great coverage downfield again. Falk trying to find a window. Now he scrambles, needs the 32, and gets popped short by Keyshawn Bieria. The ball is out, and Washington has it. 
The second turnover forced by the Dogs defense. And Keyshawn Vieira came out of nowhere to take a shot on Luke Fall. Just gets his right hand in there, was able to rip it out before Falk is down. A costly turnover for Washington State. Something that, again, has plagued them for years in this rivalry. And it's really what the Huskies have fed off of. But Bieria, by the way, he was on, on all the way on the other side of the field. And as Falk started to redirect, Bieria came out of coverage and was able to find Falk before he was able to pick up the first down and get the ball out. It's the heart of that defense. Top leader on the roster, Keyshawn Bieria. Jars it out of there, and they go to the Wildcat on first down. Ahmed comes in motion and has room. Savan Ahmed cuts it upfield, down the sideline, and inside the five. It's first and goal. Ahmed like a bolt of lightning for 27. This is one of the things that you love from offensive coordinator Jonathan Smith. Little wrinkles and design, and it wasn't just the play to Ahmed. It's the fact that you had three running backs in the game all at the same time. Jake Browning was not in the game, so all of a sudden it makes it difficult then to adjust to what exactly Washington's trying to do. Browning's back in for first and goal with Gaskin. Double to tight ends now. Browning will sneak it. He's in. Touchdown, Washington. Promptly taking advantage of the takeaway. And this is just all about size and physicality as you see Washington. See how they gap down and it allows everyone to get good push. Utilizing the man next to you and you get a little extra help nowadays with Will Disley and Drew Sample. You can push a guy in now. It's 100% legal. A lot of teams use that to their advantage, in particular on the goal line on quarterback sneaks. Uh, just to be sure, was not legal about 12 years ago? Right? Yeah, not, not in 2005. Okay. Skano's extra point. Hooks through. Couple of Washington State turnovers. Couple of Washington touchdowns. 32 seconds it takes them to take advantage. Fox College football is sponsored by Coors Light. The key to a good offense is a refreshing defense. Climb on. And by Merrill Lynch, we're bullish on the future. Yours. Not often do you see this. This is during the timeout. Mike Leach pulled the entire team together and delivered a message. He's, they've got a snap out of it. I mean, we saw in the very first drive, the defense really struggling to get off the field and get any sort of stop. Weren't able to adjust in the last drive, giving up the big play to Ahmed to put them in position to score the touchdown. But offensively, it's been the turnovers. And, and we keep hammering and talking about it, but you, you can't play on the road in these sorts of conditions with this crowd. I think you can turn the football over, be you know, minus two in the turnover margin, and be able to get a win versus a Washington team that feeds off of that. And it's trying to ruin your championship hopes. Trying to reach 10 wins for a second consecutive year. It'll be the first time since the early 90s that Washington had accomplished that. Short kick, James Williams. Shy of the 20. Checking with Greg Wolf in Los Angeles for an AT&T game break. Joe, thanks. Are we looking at the new number one, number three Clemson facing number 24 South Carolina, Kelly Bryant? Finds the hero from last year's national championship game, Hunter Renfro. He had that go-ahead score against Alabama with one second left last year. Puts Clemson up 20 to nothing at halftime. Joe, Brady, back to you. They're going to have a very good case of being number one after Alabama falls. When you look at the fact that they beat Auburn, now they're being the number top 25 team in South Carolina. I know they've got a loss, but short week on the road and their quarterback was hurt. You better believe the committee's going to take that into consideration. Washington State trying to get something going offensively. They hit the crosser to start the drive. Bernard Bell. And Bell's crunched after seven. Now, it may, may seem like... A ridiculous notion to bring up if you haven't followed Washington State season closely. But twice this year, Mike Leach has pulled Luke Falk and inserted Tyler Holinsky. How soon do you think about that in this situation? 
I, I wouldn't right now. I think this could play out similar to the Arizona game where they basically pulled Falk about at the halftime for a two minute drive. And really, Mike Leach just wanted to see or have Luke Falk see from a different perspective, to see from the sideline. He felt like he wasn't playing fast. And Tyler Holinsky went in, finished off the rest of that Arizona game, uh, and really did a nice job. But I don't know that that's your best bet of winning this game. I think Luke Falk is the better of the two quarterbacks. Isaiah Johnson Mack with the first down reception. And for the record, I think it's ridiculous that you pull the, the Pac-12's all-time leading passer, no matter the reason. But they've done it twice this year. Here's Tay Martin. And Washington was all over this one. Miles Bryant, who's back at the nickel spot, he had to play corner for much of the season with the injuries they've had there. You've got to love how aggressive Washington is on the outside. Look at Bryant. He sees the screen. He ends up just committing to it right off the bat and makes the open field tackle. Something else that Washington doesn't get enough credit for because it's simple. They tackle well in space. You don't see many missed tackles from this Husky defense. Washington's been able to pressure with three and four all night. The crossers Patman, and he's hit by JoJo McIntosh. JoJo McIntosh is the enforcer here for Washington. He kind of reminds me of Cam Chancellor for the Seattle Seahawks, and he was ejected in last week's game in the first the first half because of a targeting hit. And that one looks Boy. awfully close, and, and really the rule is you can't lead with the crown of your helmet. That's something he did a week ago. Almost similar there. Yeah, and it was added on in replay. And just so people understand, too, it doesn't matter if they're defenseless or not. You can't lead with the crown of your helmet, bottom line. They're down in short. Morrow gets swallowed up by Greg Gaines. Defense best 30-second start of his career. The big fellow with a big stop. Well, and this is why Washington is so successful. They've only got three defensive linemen, and you got five offensive linemen, but they win those one-on-one -on -one matchups, and Greg Gaines, Vita Vea, Jalen Johnson, whoever else you want to throw into the conversation, their D-line gets it done. They allow the linebackers to flow free. They get penetration. They're so tough at the point of attack. So the punt team comes out. Eric Powell's been the star of this game for Washington State so far. 55 yarder and a 64 yarder to the one yard line. This one crosses the field and it's another good punt. How about Eric Powell today? Rolling inside the 10. With Aaron Fuller again watching it bounce. If you happen to just be joining us, Dante Pettis left the game with an injury. 56 yarder that time. All about the Washington defense so far in the 110th Apple Cup. Hey, coming up on the State Farm Halftime, I'll be joined by former Oregon head coach Mark Helfrich, who tells you whether or not Jake Browning or Luke Falk is winning the quarterback battle. Plus, number one goes down and Ohio State loses JT Barrett, but still beats Michigan. We got all the highlights for you coming up and more. But right now, join Brady. Back to you. All right, Mike, great weekend of college football. Final weekend of the regular season before championship weekend next week. Jake Browning in the offense back at it with a 14-0 lead. This Washington State defense, it's been so good at forcing turnovers all year. In a spot where they need to make a play quickly. And here they shut Gaskin down for a loss. Jihad Woods for the tackle. We check in with Bruce. Guys, you have a really banged up Washington sideline over here. You had LeVon Coleman go down. He's tried to make his knee go better, and it's not working. He's tried it three different ways on the bike. And then Dante Pettis came back from the locker room. He was just shaking his head. A lot of teammates coming over to console him. And they're sitting over there with Chico McClatcher, who's out for, uh, who's been out for a while, and he's not going to play tonight. And that's another dynamic weapon they don't have. Yeah, went out with an ankle injury week four, of course. The huge one is the left tackle, Trey Adams. We did knock down with an injury. Perfectly done by Jake Browning. By Andre Bocelli, who finds an unsuspecting spectator down there. Knocked out of bounds, a first down. So good. Just so good. Watch the timing of this. Bocelli is rounding. The ball's already out and to the outside, which is the biggest key of any timing route when it's out, an outside breaking route. Away from the defender, there's really no opportunity for a quarterback to make a play on the football when you have that sort of timing and that sort of placement. 
Well, Bocelli had some big catches in that comeback win last week. Had a fourth down catch to keep their hopes alive. And then a 31 yarder to set up the game winning field goal. With a head of steam, it's Gaskin into the secondary. Miles Gaskin into Washington State territory. I mean, look at this hole on the left side of the offensive line. Watch the movement. Once he hits, there's just a clear hole, and he is obviously good enough to see the backside cut, but there's no Washington State defender. I mean, look at that. There's no Washington State defender at the second level anywhere close to Gaskin. And, and this is the trouble that you find yourself in when you have to go up against teams that use two tight end sets and three tight end sets. It forces you to have to account for an additional gap up front in the run game. Right now, Washington State, they're not putting enough bodies down around the line of scrimmage. They pound away again. Gaskin shifting his way, spinning his way. First down inside the 25. Washington already has more rushing yards than Washington State allows on average. And there's an injured Cougar. And that's Jihad Woods, a weak side linebacker, redshirt freshman out of San Diego, California. He's stepped up in a big way for this Cougar team. They've had a number of injuries at the linebacker position. Peyton Pallor, Nate DeRider, Isaac Dotson missed some time. He's been able to come back, but Woods has stepped up. He's third on the team in tackles for loss. I hope we'll be okay. Man, Gaskin is something special, huh? That spin move. And he's obviously a small back, which means, look at this, oh. the shiftiness and his cutting ability, then the spin move just to evade Isaac Dotson and continue to get additional yards. A third of his yards have actually come after first contact. I mean, for a guy who stands at only 5'10", 190 pounds, he's not very big, but it's incredibly low to the ground. He's tough to stop. Already 99 yards for Miles Gaskin. It's been all Washington in this game so far. Von Ahmed replaces Gaskin, and on first and ten, they toss it to him. He gets a nice block, and chopped down by Marcus Strong after six. But on every running play, there's a gaping hole. Doesn't matter who the running back is. No, I mean, there's no defender to even meet any Washington running back until they're about five yards downfield at this point. I mean, you can get all the penetration you want, but at some point, you've got to build a wall, and you've got to set an edge. And that's really right now where Washington's winning. They're using their bigger bodies, in that particular case, Justice Warren, who kind of moonlights sometimes as a, as a fullback. He's a tight end as well. Did a good job of helping to create the hole to the outside. A line for the big game. Huskies averaging nine yards per carry. Gaskin trying to get to the outside. This time Washington State's there. Darian Moulton the tackle. He gets close to a first down. It'll depend on where they spot him. Looks like just short. So third down and less than he are. Oh, as Washington gets closer and closer to the goal line, they tend to have a, a much higher tendency just to run the football. Once they get in the red zone, it skyrockets up. Once you get inside the 10 in these sort of short yarding situations, they really like to pound away. They'll sneak it like they did for their second touchdown, and they are just absolutely dominating Washington State up front right now. Look at the matchup of this Washington offensive line where every guy is about 300 pounds. They average over that per player. And then compare it to what you're facing with Washington State where really Equale is the only guy who's over 300 pounds. You look at Hercules, Mata'afa, Luvu, Oguayo. I mean, all those guys are around 240, 250 pounds. Yeah, Oguayo's playing up front at 237. First down and goal, here's Gaskin. Patience to let the hole to develop. Strength to drive his way inside the five. Second and goal. And you said it. He had to be patient because Washington State decided to bring a pressure. He brought both linebackers, and he had to wait until the hole declared before he accelerated through it. I do wonder at some point. You don't throw Jake Browning an opportunity to have a little play action pass as well as you're running the football. It doesn't have a hurt to mix that in every once in a while. Instead, they keep it on the ground, and why not? 
Gaskin plunges his way in for the second time tonight. Washington's opened up a three-score lead. And look at the movement on the left side of this offensive line. They just wash everyone down, and Gaskin follows his lead blockers, in particular his tight end, Will Disley. Started out as a defensive lineman, he then transitioned to playing tight end, and he's done a tremendous job of stepping up, both in the run blocking, even as a pass catching tight end at times for Washington. Twenty-one nothing, Washington. There's a different shade of red down in Palo Alto, enjoying this one. Fox College football is sponsored by USAA Insurance, banking and investments tailored for the military community. Now by Coke Zero Sugar. Coke Zero Sugar has great Coke taste with zero calories and zero sugar. Back in Seattle, Washington all over Washington State. And march down the field largely on the run. 93 yards on nine plays, seven of them on the ground. Averaging eight yards per carry. Just dominant performance so far by the Washington rushing attack, and in particular, that O-line. If they're in tune, Renard Bell back to return Vizcano's kick. It's Bell. The flag flies in. Looks like the officials are trying to discuss the spot. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 20, half the distance to the goal, first down. So we just talked about how dominant the O-line has been. The defense has been just as dominant for Washington. It's been very complimentary, meaning the coverage has been their downfield. Washington's doing a tremendous job of pattern matching, and they basically are running the routes for the Washington uh, statewide receivers. And then it's been taking advantage of mistakes. The turnover by Falk, and then the fumble. And you can see Mike Leach is upset with his quarterback, and rightfully so. He's going to have to make more throws in tight windows. A three-man rush gets to him. He was popped as he let it go. Vita Vea just blew things up. And for that very reason, Washington's getting pressure with three and four-man rushes, meaning you've gonna, you're going to have to throw the football in tight windows because there's eight in coverage. You've only got five eligible receivers able to be out in your routes. I mean, it's impossible. You get a three-man rush with that kind of pressure and eight men in coverage. You've got to find the pockets in the zone coverage at times. And you're going to have to take advantage of the short throws and incrementally work your way down the field. And Luke Falk's got to use his legs at some point. There's a whistle before the snap. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass. We're going to check to see. I believe the ball just went out of bounds. Yeah. So potentially looking to see if it was a fumble. Maybe he had lost control of the football. Right. He left his hand, but it looked to be incomplete. Take another look along with the officials. Kevin Marr, the head referee. Jerry Meyerhoff, the replay official today. I mean, look, they're double teaming Vea, and he still finds a way to get to fault. And this clearly had possession as Vea touched it, but the other thing they're looking at is whether or not it was lateral or forward, and it's close, but it, it still looks like it went forward. Yeah. So it should be an incomplete pass, second and ten. This has been the thing for Washington State in recent years. Even as they've turned the program around, they just can't figure Washington out. And a big part of the reason why has been the ability to get pressure with just three. It comes down to the fact that the 
you're about ready to hear the announcement. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass, second down. And it comes down to this. I mean, they run somewhat of a simple offense. Yeah. They don't change personnel groupings very much. It's either four wide receivers or sometimes two running backs and three wide receivers. It's the same concepts over and over and over again, even though they throw to someone different. And when you look at the history, or at least this season, for example, and their losses, they lost earlier this year to Cal. Justin Wilcox had experience at Boise State. They lost to Arizona. Their defensive coordinator, Marcel Yates, was previously at Boise State. There's a lot of connections to Chris Peterson and Boise State. Falk again in trouble. And ripped down. They spot him at the one. Benning Potolani gets involved in the action. At the two-yard line. And Third the key going to be where his forward progress was stopped. And they've got him about at the one-and-a-half-yard line. But I mean, there's not much you can say at this point. You've got to try to win those battles up front. Vita Vea is doing a good job of forcing Luke Falk to either have to move in the pocket or deal with the constant pressure. The whole thing you got to look at it. Did Luke Falk hold on to this football? And it looks like his forward progress was stopped around the one. Third and 17, and again they bring three. Falk off his back foot, throws it out of bounds. And with the rain falling in Seattle, Luke Falk is living a nightmare right now. And he took an absolute shot from Vita Vea. And they had an eligible wide receiver in the vicinity. Otherwise, that potentially could have been intentional grounding, which would have ended up being a safety. And he just got nowhere to go. That's 340 pounds in your face. No thanks. Fuller to return this punt. Kyle Sweet will send it away. Receiver for Washington State also handles some of the punt duties. And good coverage. Second tackle from Kyle Selleck. Uh, punt coverage. Time for a game break. We go back to Los Angeles. Joe, thanks. We go back to the farm. Number 21, Stanford. Number 8, Notre Dame. KJ Costello, little floater. JJ Arcega, Whiteside, comes back for it. Stanford leads 14 to 10 in the second. Of course, UW making a fourth trip to the Pac-12 title game under David Shaw, looking better and better for the Cardinal. Yeah, no matter what happens in that game, Stanford would go to the Pac-12 championship game if this score held up. Washington State's going to need a monster comeback to make its first trip. They still have plenty of time, but they've got to find a way of getting a stop versus this Washington offense. Play action on first down. Browning rolls and throws to the sideline for Ty Jones. His second catch goes for a dozen and a first down. Only his fifth reception on the season, the true freshman out of Provo, Utah. The key here is he comes back to the football. He puts his foot in the ground, gets separation from Harper, and an accurate throw by Browning as Browning leaves the field. And once again, you're going to see Washington go to this wildcat package with Miles Gaskin. The featured quarterback, if you will, and three running backs in the game. It's Gaskin. Stuck his nose down, stayed on his feet somehow to get a short game. Good adjustment by the Washington State defense. We saw how that personnel grouping really plagued them with the big game by Ahmed earlier on the jet sweep. That time they weren't fooled by the motion. Stayed at home to set an edge on Gaskin. the whole hard and Ahmed close to a first down. Isaac dots him with a tackle. This is last play. What do you do with your chain when it comes off mid game? Where else are you gonna put it? You gotta put it in your sock, man. Yeah. It's the only safe spot for it. Pull it up. Problem is as much as he's been running the football tonight, probably not too safe. So he got a breather and he and he made sure that chain is in. Uh-huh. Keeps running like this and by all the chains he wants a couple years from now. Junior from Linwood, Washington. Back in there is the Wildcat quarterback. The flag flying.
false start. Offense number 98, five yard penalty, still third down. And the tough part for Disley in that case is when you're mixing it out your quarterback or you're at home, you're gonna go with Cadence. And then you go to a wildcat scenario where a running back's back there, a quarterback, you usually go more on a silent count. So you're kind of mixing up all of a sudden the cadence, and it's, it's sometimes difficult to deal with amongst the talk and chatter on the offensive line talking about the blocking scheme. Washington State will have the ball to open the second half, trying to gather some momentum here, getting a stop in a short field. Browning looking left, throwing incomplete behind Bacelli. From here, it would be a 44-yarder for Tristan Vizcano. And he started out of the field, then they pulled him back, and now they'll send him out. He's had somewhat of a roller coaster year. Obviously, the game winner last week, but inconsistent, to say the least, this year. Now he's benched at one point after a one-for-six stretch. Back into the starting roll, and after missing an extra point, missing a 30-yard field goal, hit the first game winner of his life. An incredible finish against Utah last weekend. Timeout, Washington State, 60 seconds in length. You know, we were both headed back from uh, Stanford Cal watching that game last weekend here in Seattle. It was incredible. Ten points in the final 58 seconds. Disley had a big reception to set up Miles Gaskin for a two yard touchdown. That was with 58 seconds. Tied the game at 30. Washington got the ball back. A little bit of controversy getting them down there. And then Vizcano hit the game winner. Yeah, the controversy is head coach for Utah, Kyle Whittingham, calling a timeout after what a two-yard gain to begin that drive that ended up sending them or getting them the victory. Uh, but Washington without any timeouts, yeah. if it isn't called that, they're probably just going to go into overtime. But with the timeout, Washington was able to dissect up a couple plays and march down the field for the game-winning field goal. By Vizcano. This, by the way, would be Vizcano's career long. Does have a strong leg. He's a kickoff man throughout his career. And as a high schooler, hit a 57 yarder at one point. Vizcano from 44. It is right down the middle. With the exception of one drive, Washington has continued to find points every time they've gotten the football this half. And Chris Peterson's team trying to get to 10 wins. Started off 6-0. and oh, Absolute domination. A lot of people thinking they were headed for the playoff. But then that loss at Arizona State in a game where not much went right. Losing to Stanford on a Friday night down in Palo Alto. And that right now is the difference in them getting to the Pac-12 championship game or not, and perhaps getting to the college football playoff or not, with all the carnage we've seen around the country. And the Arizona State loss was the one that was very uncharacteristic when you watched that game. Defensively, I thought played well enough to give themselves a chance. Offensively, just couldn't put up enough points. Jake Browning received a lot of criticism for holding on to the football too much, sacked a number of times throughout the course of that game, and Stanford, you know, to me, that was more of the balance they had. Not only running the football, but they were able to get some production versus the Washington secondary, which is something that we really hadn't seen all year. And in the past two weeks, they've given up a number of pretty big performances considering the standards they've set for themselves. Yeah, they gave up 11 touchdowns over the first nine games, six touchdowns the last two weeks. Bernard Bell crosses the 20. NFL week of action continues tomorrow on Fox. Carson Wentz, a lot of people's MVP at this point, leads the Eagles against the Bears. Check your local listings for the game in your area or stream it live on Fox Sports Go. How good has Carson Wentz been in his second year in the NFL? A legitimate MVP candidate. We've got the opportunity for the Eagles to get that number one spot in the NFC. I think there's a team here locally that might have something to say about that, but we've got a lot of work to do. Talking about the Seahawks. Speaking of a lot of work to do, Mike Leach in Washington State in danger of getting shut out in a half for the first time since the Apple Cup three years ago. Luke Falk down the middle for Tavares Martin Jr. Put it in a tight spot. 
And Martin made the catch to the 45 for a gain of 23. There's just not many quarterbacks that can make that throw with enough arc and pace to be able to get it over the defender, but in the hole in the zone coverage to his wide receiver. That is tremendous. Talked about the three T's before the game. One of them was touch on display there. Now to the sideline, Isaiah Johnson Mack kept in bounds. Lock winds near a minute. Washington State has plenty of time, two timeouts. They operate extremely efficient. Seems like their operation changed a whole lot in two minutes, considering how fast they typically play on normal downs. On second and one. Falk finds a window for a first down to Kyle Sweet. Finally Sweet, getting a little bit of rhythm here. Sweet better come back to that football. You talk about this Washington defense. Their cornerbacks do a good job of getting their eyes on the quarterback and breaking on the football. Byron Murphy almost had a hand on that one. Already forced two turnovers tonight. Inside a half minute. Falk checks it down and it's dropped by Morrow. And with, with 23 seconds now on the clock, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, that game probably wouldn't have got them much, and it's in the middle of the field, so they would have had to probably burn a timeout. It's not the worst incompletion you can have in this scenario where try to take some shots, deeper shots, down to the middle of the field. You can still use one of those two timeouts. You've got a weapon in Eric Powell, who's hit three from beyond 50 this year. An empty set on second and ten. They flood the wide side of the field. Falk scrambles the other way. Let's it develop. Throws and it's picked. Tipped and intercepted. Ezekiel Turner headed the other way. The third first half turnover from Washington State. It all starts with the pressure. Vita Vail once again forces Luke Falk off the spot. Watch him force Falk to the right, which cuts the field in half. And then it allows the safeties for Washington, who are watching Falk's eyes the entire time, to be able to get a tip pick. And the return, putting Washington in position now to be able to come away with points. They do one heave ho, or they look to do here in the closing seconds. Six seconds remaining in the first half. Coming up a half, Mike Mark, Steve Farm halftime show. Look at Falk against Browning. Browning has gotten the better of that battle in this first down. Auburn takes down Alabama. We'll rehash that one. And Ohio State over Michigan today in the big house. Now you can get one quick play in with three timeouts. Typically what you're talking about in the huddle and what you're alerting the officials of is we're going to run a play. If we're down in bounds, we're calling a timeout immediately once he hits the ground. Now it can't be that far downfield but you'd like to be somewhere that allows Miss Kano the opportunity to at least give this a shot. And if not, you're going to have to be throwing up a Hail Mary towards the end zone. Browning 8 for 13 in this first half. It's been mostly about the ground game. Seven and a half yards per carry for the Huskies. Throw short, leaving two seconds. An incomplete pass looking for Aaron Fuller. Jake Browning didn't like the way that football came out of his hand. He knew he had free access to Fuller. That's typically an easy pitch and catch for Browning, some of one of his wide receivers. And with the personnel they're bringing right now, it looks like they're just going to down it. Satisfied with the 24 0 lead over the number 13 team in the country. And they do it all without Dante Pettis, without LeVon Coleman. The Huskies all over the Cougars trying to reach 10 wins for the second year in a row. Trying to spoil Washington State's championship hopes. Out of Mike Kill in Los Angeles, the State Farm Halftime Show.
the 110th Apple Cup. Washington and Washington State, all Huskies in that first half. We get ready to start the second half. Joe Davis, Brady Quinn, Bruce will be with us again in a moment. I mean, that was in every phase a thorough beatdown. Yeah, I mean, look, football games are won and lost at the line of scrimmage. And, and that's what we're seeing right now from Washington. They're winning the battle up front offensively, rushed for almost 200 yards in the first half. Washington State cannot stop them, and they can't get off the field. And then on the flip side, defensively, Washington has been unbelievably tough up front. And it's been the pressure they've been able to get with their front three, front four, and also the coverage downfield. I mean, there's nowhere for Luke Falk to go with the football. It's forcing him to hold on to the football longer than he'd like. And that's where the pass rush comes into play. And then it's been the mistakes, the costly turnovers, two interceptions, both coming on second down, where they haven't had a lot of production. And then Falk trying to find some sort of running game in the third on the third down ends up fumbling the football and again it's been all Washington all game long. The Washington State will have it to begin the second half. Looking for a monster comeback to get to the Pac-12 championship game. Otherwise it would be Stanford to take on USC on Friday night from Santa Clara. Keith Harrington has his hands on it and chopped down to the 25 yard line. Take a look at our Geico first half stats. Here is proof of what we're talking about. Washington State minus 25 on the ground. And this is not your typical Washington State defense where you know, normally giving up 181 on the ground and a half wouldn't be a big deal. They're really good stopping the run traditionally this year. Yeah, and, and really the other thing is getting turnovers and then turning those into points. And, and that's more been the story of tonight's game so far with Washington, not Washington State. So how does Washington State get it going offensively? Pac-12's all-time leading passer, Luke Falk, 12 of 19 with those two interceptions. And it gets a three-man rush like they saw much of the first half. They complete it to Tavares Martin, Jr. And we go down to Bruce Feldman. Joe, Mike Leach's diagnosis of that first half, our guys are just trying to do too much, and we're trying to make all these special plays. I had asked him, I said, do you think you guys are at all intimidated by these guys? He goes, I, I don't really think so, but we got to find a way to get these blo guys blocked, especially that number 50. He's killing us. That'd be Vita Vea. Bernard Bell, the motion man. They bring an extra man this time, and Luke Falk takes off. They'll spot him where he began the slide, which is right at the marker. That's something that Luke Falk's going to have to do a lot of in this second half because Washington State doesn't have much of a running game as good as Washington's been up front and stopping the run. And you're at a deficit now where you've got to throw the football. So when they do have an opportunity, when he has an opportunity to find a rush lane and pick up additional yards, he's going to have to do that. We're going to take a look at this, Brady, and I'm not sure that he had gotten the first down before he began that slide. And again, you're spotted where you give yourself up, where you begin to commit to the slide. That's where the ball goes. Let's take another look. So right there, it's going to be where the ball is. And as you and I have talked about through the course of the season, Joe, the tough thing is going to be, you know, is there indisputable evidence this will be our best look and I, I think he's got it in that case or at least there's not anything that would tell me otherwise that would overturn what the call was on the field and you said it all year long it's it's really tough to overturn a spot a number of things we've seen throughout the course of tonight's game and really where Washington State's offense has struggled is two things. It's when they're getting their timing disrupted on the outside from press coverage and also obviously pressure on Luke Falk. When he's had to get off his spot and move, it's been tough for him to be able to After find out the run review, It's been determined that the runner was down at the 35-yard line. It'll be third down. Yeah, so they say he started his slide about a yard early. So third down and one coming up. That's interesting. I didn't think based on our replay and what we showed. This knee's down right there. Uh -huh. Third down and one for the Cougars on their first drive of the second half. Get the 
Something sorted out. That is not Will Farrell. That is Rick DiBernardo. <laughs> Dead ringer for Will Farrell. I'm not sure exactly what they're taking a look at. I don't know that we've ever seen a game where they're taking this much time on a spot <laughs> and, and what they could be talking about right now. Whoever has the laser, please put it away. <laughs> that explains it. All right. Laser put away, got the ball spotted where it should be. Yeah, third and one. They throw the bubble. Kyle Sweet not going to get it. Ball comes out. They say that it's a completion and a fumble that Washington State recovers. Sweet gets on top of the ball that he coughed up. Washington State tries to utilize a wide receiver screen. You're going to see the recognition up here. Look how you see Byron Murphy redirect, get to the football. That's football instincts. Doesn't get much better than that. And the thing that you're seeing is Washington didn't have the numbers. There was only two defenders out there. They had the opportunity to complete the wide receiver screen for a decent gain, but Murphy they just won the one-on-one -on -one battle in the open field. That's been the story of tonight's game. So that overturned call lines up looming large as they have to punt it away. And Fuller with a fair catch on a line drive. So Washington will have it for their first drive of the second half from the 33-yard line after this. Fox College Football is sponsored by Allstate, official protector of college football fans. And by Dockers, khakis ready for anything. One of the great scenes in college football. Lake Washington, set against Husky Stadium here, where the ground game has been dominant for these Huskies. Yeah, and credit the blocking up front. I mean, Miles Gaskins is getting touched, so he's five, sometimes ten yards downfield and they've been able to dominate the line of scrimmage when they've needed to most in the red zone that's been the mix that Jonathan Smith has brought as far as the wildcat packages that allowed them to show some different looks and finding even more production so Miles Gass gonna begin this second half at running back 114 yards for him in that first half Here he is. And a stop made by Namdi Oguayo after a short gain, second down. The key for Washington State is trying to find ways of you know, getting guys in the backfield, create some of those negative plays, and really force Jake Browning to be one dimensional. Remember, Dante Pettis, their number one wide receiver, is not in the game. Not had to really put much pressure on Browning in the passing game. Second and nine. Here's Bocelli one on one with Moulton. And the Washington State defense rallies. It'll be third down and long. It's a stop made by Hunter Dale. This is a big opportunity for Washington State. They can get off the field, get the ball back to their offense, and then try to find a way of get something going. That down and distance where we've seen Jake Browning be a little bit more mobile at times throughout the course of the season because of pass rush, sometimes by design. Best third down team in the Pac-12 facing a five-man rush. Browning steps up, shovels it dangerously, and it's broken up by Harper. There's a flag down in the backfield, and this drive will be extended. Browning is down, just now gets up, and yeah, that's in the area of a late hit. Yeah, it's Hercules Mata'afa, and you just can't afford to make that mistake down 24. You've struggled to get off the field on third down, and you had what would have been a stop. Can't believe you shovel past that. Mm. 
10 yards? Yeah. Bold strategy. Personal foul with targeting defense number 50. The previous play is under further review. And so that would lead to an ejection for Hercules Mataafa, their top player on defense. You can see Browning just buying time, buying time. Mataafa is there waiting for Browning to potentially scramble. He was the spy. Clearly, Browning's got rid of the football. There's helmet to helmet. And with the launch, that hits all the criteria that you would need to inject, eject a player for targeting. And this is a huge loss to a defense that looking at their best player. Now, all of a sudden, not being a part of this team for the rest of the game. Shakes off the cobwebs there as we bring on Dean Blandino. Dean, good to have you with us. How do you see this one? Yeah, when we think about targeting, it's one of two types. It's either a defenseless player or it's with the crown of the helmet on any opponent. This is a defenseless player. The, the passer gets defenseless player protection. You can't lead with the helmet, go to the head-neck area. You can see there's clear contact to the head-neck. This call should be confirmed. Really launched himself at Browning. Mm. You don't figure that it'll take long either. Well, after the laser debacle. <laughs> after further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed for targeting. Number 50 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Dean, thank you. So Hercules Mataafa ejected from this game for targeting. And we'll have to miss the first half of what at this point looks like a bowl game for Washington State. Barring a huge comeback. 24-0 Huskies in front. Fresh life on this possession. And if you're a defensive coordinator, Alex Grinch for Washington State, it limits somewhat of what you can do because they like to utilize Hercules Mataafa in a variety of ways and move him around. But Shelley headed around the left side. Thompson grabs a hold of him. And it's second down. That's a good open field tackle by Jalen Thompson. Because if he didn't stop Bacelli, there's a lot of room to run. Thompson's a good player. Started every game since arriving. Sophomore out of Downey, California, was a freshman All-American last year. And their leading tackler here is a sophomore. Yeah, him and Robert Taylor really play well off of one another. A couple times this season, both have had interceptions in games. Here's a trick play out of the Wildcat. Washington State has it snuffed out. He still gets rid of it. This is Kamari Pleasant hurdling his way to the 21. Wow. 20 yards. Browning somehow got it off. Well, they were trying to work the ball to Will Disley. The senior out of Bozeman, Montana. And you'll see. Look how he works up the field. He's got him, but he's got to move because of the pressure. He tries to set his feet again, but once again, Houdini's and finds his way to flip the ball to Pleasant. I mean, an unbelievable job by Jake Browning just to make something out of nothing. Gaskin. By the way, how many times do you see what is almost back-to-back -back plays with a shovel pass as things are getting a little chippy down there in the field? Flag just flew. Typically what happens when you've got a rivalry game and one side's extremely frustrated. And this almost looked like Dotson punched someone. And you see on the left side of your screen, right oh. there. It's a kidney shot. Get ejected for that. And look, he's probably there trying to no plead his case. Play. Second down. He's no probably foul. trying to plead his case. He was going for the football because that was the arm Gaskin had in his left arm, but there's no need for that. That was long after the play was dead. And if they had determined that that was a malicious punch, it would have been grounds for ejection. They just showed it on the video board here. 
And it's hard to tell, but you can see he's, he's trying to go after the football. And this is what desperation looks like when you're down. And you're trying to do all you can just to get a turnover and make something happen. Second down nine. They give it back to Gaskin, who's met in the hole this time. Justice Rogers. See more time at linebacker with Jihad Woods banged up. Third down. Rogers, who came in for Isaac Dotson. And Dotson missed some time earlier this year. Rogers played pretty well. I mean, you had three, three freshmen almost at times playing the linebacker position, doing a pretty darn good job for Washington State. Supposed to be a veteran group. Had three senior starters there to begin the year, but as you mentioned earlier, Peyton Polar, Nate DeRider, Isaac Dotson, all injuries at some point. Here's Fuller. Not a whole lot there. It'll be fourth down. You got to love the fact that Washington State's rallying to the football. There's still a ton of effort. They understand there's plenty of time left in this football game, and as lopsided as it's looked, their offense has the firepower to be able to come back and make plays in the passing game, although the way this game has gone, I have a hard time believing that tonight. Field goal team comes out. Tristan Viscano hit a career-long 44-yarder his last time, and it seems like he's really feeling good about himself right now. The game winner last week. He struggled from the right hash, though, this season. This is where the majority of misses has come. Thirty-four. He's two for two today. All Huskies in this one. They extend the lead to twenty-seven nothing over their in-state rival. Fox College football is sponsored by Duluth Trading. Tough, ingenious workwear designed and tested by tradesmen. Back here in Seattle, where the Washington defense has been dominant. In a season full of dominant performances. They got a signature one going here. Shutting Washington State out through two plus quarters. Taken down to the 22 yard line by Zeke Turner. And in a 27 0 game, we go in the huddle, brought to you by SoFi, a modern finance company. If they're going to have some kind of success on offense, what's got to happen? Well, the toughest thing is there's not many answers right now with the way this offense is played, but they've got to find better production on first and second down. With the exception of a couple outliers, that's what's plagued them. They've had a hard time just getting to third down. Luke Falk has thrown two interceptions on second down. They're averaging less than two yards per play. 14 to 21 overall for 135. Here's Morrow. Jamal Morrow tackled by Ben Burr Kirvin. Mentioned it earlier when you look at the recipe for success versus Washington State. Chris Peterson's defenses that had so much success. And you look at some of the relations back to other teams this year that have had success versus Washington State. Justin Wilcox, who spent some time at Boise State. Marcel Yates, defensive coordinator, Arizona, who spent some time at Boise State. And the common denominator is the way they mix some things up up front, the way they mix coverages, playing a little bit more split safety looks at times. Fault to the sideline, there is Tate Martin. On time and on target for a first down. We're going to get Miles Bryant, although there is a flag down. But you know, what that has forced Washington State to do is a pass happy offense that's throwing against looks that aren't conducive. Ineligible receiver downfield. Offense number six. He was covered up. Replay, second down. That's Jameer Colvin, the true freshman. And this is the sort of communication you got to have with a wide receiver outside of you. Right here. See, he's on the line. So he's got to be off. And that's the issue. Even though he's eligible, he's covered up by someone outside. 
So wipes away the first down pickup on second and eight. Here comes Morrill with a head of steam. Clipped down by Austin Joyner. Talking about Chris Peterson coaching tree. Guys that spent some time with him at Boise State. The success they've had against his Washington State offense this year. And for Chris Peterson, really, his entire time as head coach here. And it's those roots stemming back to Boise, but it's, it's really been the different things they do up front, whether it's with their pass rush or their coverage on the back end. The mixture of coverage is the things they try to do to disguise and confuse Luke Falk after the snap of the football. Cougars yet to convert a third down today, facing a four-man rush. Falk over the middle gets picked off. It's Ben Burkirvin, third interception of the day for Washington. This has happened on every interception so far today. Luke Falk's just not seeing the defense. I mean, Ben Burkirvin was looking up this route the entire time. Watch his eyes as he drops into coverage. He sees it coming the whole way. Luke Falk starts to stare down sweet, and he's thrown off his back foot. He doesn't have much on the football anyway, which makes it a very easy interception for Burkirvin. But you didn't see him. And that's the problem when you talk about how you go about reading defenses and your progressions, all the things you talk about in the quarterback room. When you read a defense, you're, you're looking at defenders. These are all pure progression reads for Washington State. Gaskin on first down, short game. And what that means is you're basically looking one, two, three, four, five. You're going through all the different receivers or potential receivers in the routes. And because of that, you're not so focused on the defense. But that's when you lose sight of where certain players are, especially when a defense moves at the snap of the football, like Washington did on that a couple plays ago. And Luke Falk's career now in the Apple Cup, which is three games long. He missed one game with a concussion. Three touchdowns and eight interceptions. Gaskin makes one man miss. Accelerates. Miles Gaskin leaping for the end zone. His third touchdown of the day. And the route is on in the Apple Cup. I mean, this is the last spot you want to be in. If you're a defender in space, like Sean Harper was one on one, it's tough to even get a hand on Miles Gaskin. And look at the balance and the ability to stay in bounds and leap for the pylon. I mentioned earlier tonight's broadcast and the two losses Washington's had this season. Jake Browning didn't throw a touchdown pass. Now, they beat UCLA, and he didn't throw a touchdown pass in that game, but they rushed for 333 yards and five touchdowns, which is looking very similar to how tonight's yeah. game. Second week in a row with the three touchdowns for Gaskin. Running his school record total to 42. An extra point is just barely through. 34-0. Washington in front. The defending Pac-12 champs ruining Washington State's chance at getting a crown of their own. Can't wait for next weekend on Fox. Big 12 championship starts off Super Saturday. Oklahoma playing for a spot in the playoff against TCU. Then it's Wisconsin and Ohio State in the Big Ten championship game. All next week, Super Saturday on Fox. If Oklahoma wins, Wisconsin wins, I don't know that there's much controversy. Those two teams get into the playoff. But if Ohio State was to beat Wisconsin as a two-loss champion, we saw Penn State get leapfrogged last year as a Big Ten champion, even though they beat Ohio State head-to-head -head and won the division. Things could get interesting, and obviously with Alabama losing today, or if they have a shot at getting in. I want to go to Dallas-Fort Worth for the Big 12 championship. Sounds fun. All right, Bernard Bell tackled at the 20. Bruce Feldman should come with us next weekend. Bruce, how about tonight, though? Guys, our crew has seen some good D linemen this year. We've had Oklahoma, Ohio State, Michigan. I have not seen anything quite like Vita Vea this year in person. He is just abusing and ragdolling these Washington State O-linemen. At one point, he came over to the sideline. One of his teammates goes, they can't block you. They can't even double team you. Just keep eating. I mean, it's like Washington State's D-line may be small. Their O-line is not small. And he is just crushing them tonight. 
Now, Washington State's got one of the biggest offensive lines in the Pac-12. Falk all day this time. And finds a man, but it's jarred out of there. Wow! Byron Murphy absolutely punishes Isaiah Johnson Mack. My goodness! Well, he's not very big. He's only 5'11", 175 pounds, but he can move. Take a listen. And that is perfectly legal. He hit within the strike zone, led with the shoulder, not with the helmet. Well done by Byron Murphy. Freshman who had two interceptions in his debut game against Rutgers, but then broke his foot and missed two months. Now his second game back. Watching him come back, that young man's the difference maker. Paul Keevan one into one on one coverage. Desmond Patman makes a nice catch, gets a foot down. Taking advantage of that 6 4 length. And this is really the mismatch I was kind of looking for all game long from Washington State, but they haven't taken many opportunities to just throw up jump balls. They've got multiple wide receivers who are 6 3 or taller. Whether it's Isaiah Johnson, Mack, Tavarius Martin. We saw Pittman, I mean, excuse me, Patman. I mean, they've got a number of guys who are. At least four inches taller than the quarterbacks they're working against. Morrow out of the backfield. Jamal Morrow cuts it upfield for a first down. Just going back to Vita Vea. You know, one of the things that I think last year when you watched him a little bit, he wasn't in as good condition or shape. So in late in games, you didn't see him have the same type of impact that we've seen him have here coming into the third quarter. That's been one of the biggest differences. You see it watching the fourth quarter. Vita Vea is still impacting games, still getting penetration. Falk shovels a bullet right through the hands of Morrow. Now Pete Kwiatkowski, the D coordinator for Washington, told us last year that when he's on, Vita Vea, that is, he's unstoppable. The question was, would he be on? Because the effort was not there, play in and play out. They think he's gotten much closer to be that consistent guy every play this year. That's what the tape tells this year. Him and Greg Gaines, the job that they've done. But it helps, too, when you go against an offense that's largely one-dimensional. They don't have to worry about stopping the run. They just have to worry about getting after full. Which they do again with a three-man rush. And the second, or the first sack tonight for Jalen Johnson. I mean, at some fo point, Luke Falk's got to get rid of the football. I mean, you're going to see crossing routes coming underneath. I know there's a lot of guys dropping into coverage, but you've got to move. You've got to get rid of the football. This is what you've dealt with all night long, so you have to adjust because you cha can't change the five guys in front of you. You can't change the score. So you've got to find a way of moving and making something happen if you're Luke Falk. He's been sacked five times. He's thrown three interceptions. He's fumbled. A night to forget. For the senior from Logan, Utah. On third and 17, Kyle Sweet can't hang on. Heard the footsteps of Austin Joyner over the way that Washington's been throwing the lumber. You don't blame him for maybe getting a little bit of alligator arms on this one. He's just holding on to the football so long, staring down his target. And, and you're talking about Joyner, who's a quarterback on the opposite side of the field. When you play in zone coverage, you're typically going to read the quarterback's eyes. So usually you can jump routes, you can get picks and disrupt completions. But at this point, I mean, they've got to adjust. They've got to do something to be able to get some easy completions and try to get yards after the catch. But the point is first and second down have been disaster so far tonight. Fuller back to return. Mitchell Cox's part. Fields it takes a knee at the 15 yard line. All Washington in this one. What a chaotic week in college football. We'll take a look at the playoff picture as it stands entering championship weekend after this break. <laughs> Top two teams both lose this weekend, so now what? I think it's going to be three through six move up in those top four spots. You're going to see Alabama at five, probably Miami sitting there at six. But you know, you're looking at teams like Clemson, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Auburn. Um, look, they've, they've still got to all play conference championship games, so we'll see how that plays out 
over the course of next week. Washington start this drive of the 15. Here's Ahmed. A gain of 10, and we go down to Bruce. Guys, I don't want to hear about two SEC teams getting in the playoff this year. If people bump up Alabama with their resume, it's embarrassing. Their best win is LSU, who's 9-3. and three. People were hanging their hat on beating Mississippi State. They just lost to Ole Miss. They were like a 17-point favorite. So if they get in, the committee should be embarrassed. No two teams for the, for the SEC this year. Sorry. And there's some people who feel that way, but Wisconsin doesn't have that strong strength of schedule. I mean, Northwestern might be one of their best wins, but Michigan lost today. When you look at the Big Ten West, it's a little easier, but that's also an undefeated team, and that's assuming they would beat Ohio State. I think there's going to be more of a gripe if Ohio State wins the Big Ten championship as a two-loss champion. There's some people who maybe say, you know, look, that team had two bad losses this year, and, you know, how, how really good if, do you feel about their game control and some of their wins given how they beat Penn State? Um, and, and look, you don't know the status of JT Barrett. He's probably going to play next week the Big Ten Championship, but if he doesn't, does that factor in potentially? Down one. Brady, if you get a Big Ten champ in there and if Ohio State were to beat Wisconsin, I think that would be enough. Now, they do have two bad losses, but when we're comparing them to Alabama, to me, it just doesn't make sense because Alabama, it'd be one thing if they lost after, you know, next week after having beaten Auburn, but they don't have any good wins right now. And they have a loss, you know, it was by double digits. You know, I, I just don't see it. I, I think what we're going to have is the four conference champs. I don't think you're going to get a Pac-12 team in, and I don't think your alma mater is going to be able to sneak in either. One thing you guys both said, Ohio State doesn't have two bad losses. Losing to Oklahoma is not a bad loss, right? Well, in the fashion in which they did and the fact that they were home, I think you look at that loss thinking it's not bad in the sense of who they played, but you're also looking at a team that you would expect to be more competitive, and you're worried about who's going to show up the playoff. I mean, we saw yeah. Ohio State get in last year not being a conference champion, and they didn't show up. It was a goose egg versus Clemson. I don't think the committee wants to see that again this year with a non-conference champion or with a team that maybe is a conference champion, but they've already seen some bad losses like Ohio State faced versus Oklahoma and versus Iowa. Heavy dose of Savan Ahmed on this drive. Closing seconds of the third quarter. The game owned by Washington. And as they see all these things up in the air across the country, it's salt in the wound for dropping that game. Really, you understand the loss at Stanford, but dropping that game at Arizona State, where they only managed seven, you're going to be sitting there thinking, what if? Have we gotten one more score? What if? And there are a number of things that went awry in that game. I think one thing you got to credit Todd Graham and his staff for, they got a lot of pressure on Jake Browning in that matchup. A number of missed kicks as well, but that, that played a factor. It's, it's all in hindsight. Washington right now is about ready to put back-to-back 10-win -back seasons together. Haven't done it since 1990, 1991. Something to be said for that. Just the fact that this Washington team has been able to sweep Washington State. Gaskins back in there. Another short game. There's a lot of validity to what Bruce said, though, as far as four conference champions getting in. And, you know, they're they're going to look at the Pac-12 champion, whoever that may be, as they're going to have too many losses. We haven't seen a two-loss conference champion get in. So given that that could potentially be the case in Ohio State, we'll see what the committee decides. But they, they probably wouldn't mind if things were easy for them. And if yeah. teams like Clemson, Oklahoma, Wisconsin, you know, all won, and obviously you know, then you'd be looking at, uh, you know, an SEC champion, which if it's Auburn, you got to give them the benefit of the doubt because they beat Georgia twice in Alabama in three weeks or three games. It's impressive. Yeah, you got to figure the committee today was sitting there saying, oh, no, oh, no. Our job just got a whole lot tougher with Alabama losing. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Snowball Express and their commitment to providing hope and new happy memories to the children of our fallen heroes while on active duty since 9-11. By bringing children together from all over the world, Snowball Express provides an annual life-changing event to make each child feel special 
as we remember the lives of their parents. Visit FoxSportsSupports.com to learn more. They're down six to open the fourth quarter. Jake Browning in the Husky offense. Evades the pressure momentarily, but then goes down. Nick Begg gets the sack. For a Washington State defense that averages more than three sacks a game, it's top ten in the country. That's their first one tonight. Joel Whitford out of Australia. High punt. Now at the 12. Early on in the fourth quarter, going to take a break. Back to Seattle in a moment. Fox College football is sponsored by Progressive Insurance, handing off big savings to you. And by Dr. Pepper, the one fans crave. With Washington rolling Washington State, you're welcome, Stanford. Headed to the Pac-12 championship game. Stanford playing Notre Dame right now, and Greg Wolf has an update. All right, Joe, we go back to Sanford Stadium, trailing by three. Stanford goes on a seven-play, 70-yard drive. K.J. Costello caps it off, going to his roommate, Caden Smith. 19-yard touchdown. The Cardinal back on top, 24-20, fourth quarter. Joe Brady, back to you. That's two weeks in a row now. Yeah, finally giving those tight ends some love. Vita Vea all over Luke Falk as he dumps it off. Yeah, Morrow is driven down by Miles Bryant. Washington State, for the second year in a row, entered the Apple Cup, one win away from advancing to the Pac-12 championship game. Last year in Pullman, got routed 45-17. And now trailing 34-0, Stanford on the verge of meeting USC next Friday. Washington State is just a different team on the road this year. Talking about the loss that they've sustained in Arizona and Cal, they just and showed up. Falk throws on the move. It's tipped and incomplete. Byron Murphy got his hand on it to set up third down. Talked about it earlier. You know, I wish they would incorporate a little bit more quick game. You know, force Luke Falk to get the ball out of his hand quicker. And some of the voids and soft spots in the zone coverage of Washington. Everything's been more of just your typical drop back passing game. The Washington defense has forced Luke Falk to. Hold on to the football because of their coverage, and they've gotten after them and put pressure on them with a three and four man rush. Still yet to convert a third down today. 0 for 7. Here's Morrow, who's got a first down. Jamal Morrow across the 30 yard line. Been one of the differences too you haven't seen much from Washington State is them completing more footballs to the running backs. We got about what six or seven catches tonight as a group. Number of drops early in the game, combination of that and poor passes, but haven't been able to get those guys going and give Falk some easier completions. Tipped and incomplete. Murphy got his hand on it again. They have just reloaded in this secondary after the three departures to the NFL. Jones, King, and Baker all drafted in the second round. They were so experienced. You know, I mean, you've got guys who replaced them that you're talking about it as a sophomore, a redshirt freshman, and a redshirt sophomore, and Bryant Murphy and Joyner. So they're, they're able to play at such a high level at such a young age. Falk off his back foot out of bounds. There's a common scene. Falk scraping himself off of the deck. And once again, it's only a three-man rush. I can't tell you how miserable it sounds to sit in the pocket against a three-man rush, eight in coverage, and there's nowhere to throw the football. I mean, it feels absolutely suffocating to be in that position. Time was Benning Potoa'i. Getting by Andre Diller. They've taken turns making Luke Falk feel him tonight. 
Here's Patman back shoulder making a nice contested grab against Byron Murphy. I would have thought for sure that would have been a free play for Washington State. Not that it mattered, but you're going to see Greg Gaines. And I don't think he got back in time before they snapped the football. But again, doesn't matter. Great back shoulder to Pat. Had a couple of nice contested catches tonight. In Washington territory. Falk steps into one to the sideline in the air and incomplete. Joined to the coverage. Tavares Martin Jr., the intended receiver. The toughest thing for Luke Falk with what this Washington defense has done in their secondary is they're mixing up their looks. And at the snap of the football, you're either going to safety running down to create a single high safety look, or you'll get both safeties sitting in the back. And then sometimes they move where they'll shift to one side of the field and play more of a zone coverage with two defenders to the outside. So that disguise, that mix, I think it's confused Falk at times. Able to get this one off, finding Morrill for a first down across the 30. And that's the weak portion of the field when you play a too high split safety coverage. It's the middle of the field. This void, and if you could find a way of free releasing a running back, it forces those linebackers to have to play in coverage. I don't know how Falk sneaked that ball in there. Six time he's found Morrill tonight. That leads the Cougars. On the 28, first and 10. They shovel it off again tomorrow. The area of the stop after eight or nine. If you're a Washington State fan, where was this in the beginning of the game? How about that? Last time they were shut out, 2010, before Mike Leach arrived. At this point. You figure you're probably four down territory everywhere now, given the point in the game. On second and short, Falk pressured again with only a three man rush. And you can just see how miserable that looks to have to live. You're Luke Falk, eight pen in coverage, and you're still running for your life. You talked about Jamal Morrow leading them in receptions with seven so far tonight. He's had, what, three on this drive? And they were actually trying to target him once again, working on Ben Burkirvin. But Morrow couldn't get open, and the pressure eventually forced him to throw the football away. And at some point, third and short, given that you've only got five men in the box, why not run the football, pick up the first down, and then look to try to score after that? Negative 31 rushing time. A lot of those are the five sacks. They've only run it one time in the second half, and it remains that way as Renard Bell has a first down. Bell, one of the more promising wide receivers of this Washington State group, the redshirt freshman. Talked about they love his attitude, love his demeanor, the way he practices and approaches the game. It's, it's a little hobble. He's only five foot eight, 165 pounds. So he plays bigger than that. Then with Jameer Calvin, similar size. Both out of Cathedral High in Los Angeles. Falk chased from behind across his body, has Tavares Martin Jr. again, and Ben Burkirvin racking up the tackles. Washington State loves these crossing routes in this portion of the field. And eventually, what you're going to see is they're going to run some sort of concept with the two post routes. I shift out of this. Looking for that void in the middle of the field. They find it with Sweet. First and goal, Washington State. Someone's like to flip it and run it again. Here's Morrow. Not a whole lot of room in there. Surrounded by purple shirts. The ball came out, but it was blown dead. And it's second down. Steve's really hoping for a shutout. This is that area where you'd think that size advantage, if they can throw the football up for a fade, would come into play for Washington State. Out of 
bottom you have Isaiah Johnson Mack who has four inches on Byron Murphy. Second and goal back to Morrow and he's in for the touchdown. So the Cougars finally on the board here in the fourth. Really the key was the way they spread the field there. You talked about Isaiah Johnson Mack. They had a two by two set with both sets of wide receivers extremely wide, forcing Washington to have to declare how they wanted to play their defense, how many guys they wanted to put around the line of scrimmage to stop the run. Washington State had the numbers. We'll finally find a seam in that Washington State or that Washington defense. Excuse me. Punch it in on the 15th play of the drive. And Powell had the extra point. And it's 34 7. We talked about the playoff picture. The other thing that's developing as we move into December is the coaching carousel. Bruce Feldman will give us some details when we come back. There's some big time openings across college football, aren't there, Bruce Feldman? That's right, Joe, especially in the SEC. Keep an eye on Arkansas if you're a Washington State fan. I was told on Friday by a source that if Auburn ended up winning this weekend against Alabama, which obviously they did, that might take Gus Malzahn out of the mix for the for the Arkansas vacancy. And here's where it gets interesting. I'm told some Razorback influential boosters are very intrigued by Mike Leach and may try to come after him. He also potentially could be in play for Nebraska, where Bill Moose, his old boss, who was the AD for the Cougars, is now in Lincoln. The question, though, is would Leach actually leave? I know he really likes it in Pullman. His family's happy there, and he's obviously built this. But if Arkansas comes coming or Nebraska, would he be able to say no? Onside kick recovered by Ty Jones. And, and the other part of that is, you know, you're, you're changing your program the way it looks, at least offensively, in a dynamic fashion, right? I mean, Arkansas has been known for running the football. They've been able to throw the football and air it out a little bit, but I mean, Brett Bielema, former offensive lineman, I mean, he's, he likes to run the football. That's a complete identity change if you're Arkansas. As you look at what Mike Leach has been able to do for his time at Washington State. Nine and 40 in the four seasons before he arrived to help turn this program around. First down run for Gaskin. Accelerates for a nice pickup. So uh, not that surprising to see Mike Leach attached to some openings. But Bruce, what is this about Chris Peterson perhaps being a candidate at Tennessee? Joe, I think it's so far-fetched. Now, I was told that Tennessee has interest in him. I don't doubt that. This guy's a great coach. You see what he's doing this year, and, like, he's got a bunch of really good offensive players who are sidelined and injured. Injured. I just couldn't see Chris Peterson, who didn't want to be in the USC fishbowl, going into the biggest fishbowl maybe in the SEC, and it's, like, kind of a crazy job in Knoxville. What, would he really, with his personality, want to be a part of that? I don't even, even if they were to throw a ton of money, I just don't see Chris Peterson wanting to be part of it. It was a pretty darn good situation he's got here. Miles Gaskin into the clear. Gaskin inside the 10, inside the five, first and goal. I mean, it's just incredible. Not only won the job that the offensive line does up front, creating holes. I mean, look, Gaskin's got the vision. He's got the gas once he steps on the pedal. But watch him just carry a defender. An additional, what, 10 yards? You can't say enough about how consistent he's been since he's gotten to Washington. He's averaged 100 yards in every game of his career. And you put it all together. In the last five games, four of them, he's rushed for over 100 yards. The one game he didn't, he caught for over 100 yards in the passing game. How about a four-touchdown day? Emblematic of how this day has gone. Untouched into the end zone for Miles Gaskin. And safety, Jalen Thompson was the free defender. And after one cut, that's all it took for Gaskin to get in the end zone. What a day. Huh. Lene Jones saying these dogs will hunt. You've been working on that one for a good chunk of the week. It's hunting season. Right. 
You had going to break earlier. How about them apples? Uh, Monday, Tuesday. Well, when did you start planning that one? It just came to me in the moment. <laughs> of course it did. Uh, oh, Washington. Gaskins for a touchdown. Huskies in the 110th Apple Cup. How about that fake apple? The air apple? Uh-huh. Classic. I only break it out once a year. What kind? What's your favorite apple? It's a Fiji? I think it's a Fiji. Really? Apple. That's your yeah. favorite? I like the grannies too, though. Those are good. Honey crisp all day. Wow. Too specific. Had one last night in Rome. Bernard Bell. Crosses the 25-yard line. Time now for the progressive performance of the game. Miles Gaskin, 10 yards short of his career high, 192 with his second career four touchdown game. He's been phenomenal tonight. We talked about it when Dante Pettis got hurt, then LeVon Coleman, someone had to step up. And with the conditions here and the rain that's constantly falling, it's been Miles Gaskin. He's been as good as it gets. All-around athlete. He was a track champion in high school. Dunked a basketball when he was in eighth grade. This is not a particularly big guy. He's 5'10". The other thing is, people always talk about, can he take the beating? Can he take the bruising? 25 carries tonight. He's proven that since he was a true freshman. Because he never really takes the big hit. He's so good in space of getting down and kind of ducking or spinning and finding a way not to be able to take the brutal hits that stack up over the course of a season. I think Coleman, too, sharing the load a little bit. Ahmed, as well, this year as a true freshman, has helped out. It's kind of allowed him to not carry so much of a burden. How do you think Miles Gaskin profiles in the NFL? Again, in today's NFL, there's no more bell cow back, so I think that bodes well for Gaskin because of his ability to come in and give you some good reps. Now, he's small, but, I mean, the thing that impresses me the most is he's pretty good at pass protection. Uh -huh. I mean, he'll stick his nose in there. He'll, he'll chop or, excuse me, cut guys down, but he's also pretty feisty in pass protection, and he can catch the football out of the backfield. So all those things speak well for him. I think the biggest thing is, is what is his speed going to be and the 40 and the combine, those are things that obviously allow you to separate yourselves from the rest of the pack because he doesn't have that size and physicality that you see in some other backs that get taken in the top, top few rounds of the draft. On third down and three, they again drop eight into coverage, and a man comes open underneath. And it's Martin Jr. for a Washington State first down. It's the same concept. They've been running time and time again. Guy in the flat, guy in immediate route, and having some sort of clear out, whether it's a go or a corner route. Take some of the sting a little bit off from this performance if Washington State can continue to drive, get points, make it statistically look a little better in the box score. But for Luke Falk, I mean, clearly disappointment. And this is played for Washington State for a while. This is his first time playing Seattle in the Apple Cup because he sat out a couple of years ago when we were here and watched Peyton Bender end up starting for the Cougars. And it's going to remain that for him and the seniors, Washington will be the only team that they fail to beat in their time in Pullman. Snuck that one in there, and they say that Patman got a foot down. That's a catch, and a first down. Incredible footwork by Patman. Watch as he is able to bring in the catch, but see how he picks his left leg up and drags the right. I mean, that is textbook. And, it, and you'd think that you wouldn't want to lift that left leg up like that and extend that out of bounds. What it forces you to do, because you're kind of off balance, is put your right leg on the ground to be able to drag it, because you're kind of off balance. Hit as he throws. Vita Vey almost had an interception. It was Keyshawn Bieria that got a hold of Falk as he tried to let it go. It's been the story of the night. 
Keyshawn Bieria adds to the pressure. He's actually looking to try to cover the back, and once he had a free rush, and he saw Falk wasn't going to him, he said, he figured, why not? Let's try to go get a sack and disrupt the pass play. Well, how's Luke Falk going to feel tomorrow morning? Sore. Oh. And probably angry, and when you think about his journey and how he got to Washington State, the guy was a walk-on when he first got there. Ended up moving to California, going to L.A. for high school for a certain portion. When he came back to Logan, Utah, he ended up having to sit out a year because he was considered ineligible. And Williams has a first down on a little shovel pass. Forced him to be off the radar for a lot of schools out there. Had a phenomenal senior year at Logan High School. I felt like Pullman reminded him of, of Logan, of his hometown. Like it was a better fit. And when he got here, he was the sixth stringer, but stood out right away for his work ethic, moved up the depth chart. As a redshirt freshman, he was Connor Halliday's backup and started the final few games when Halliday was hurt. Would feel to evade the rush this time and slides down after a short game. First full year as a starter in 2015, he was the nation's leading passer. And again last year, similar numbers, 4,500 yards, 38 touchdowns. And he's capping it all off as the Pac-12's all-time leader in just about every major passing category. The ones you want. Yeah, you know. Right. <laughs> I don't think the next question is going to be, you know, how does he compare or translate to the NFL? Yep. We haven't seen many quarterbacks from Mike Leach's system be able to play well, play at a high level once they get to the NFL. And the biggest thing is, as we look at his Pac-12 records entering today, he's only going to build upon that between tonight and the bowl game. But I think the, the biggest difference is you see the style of offense that they run, and it, it's just not as conducive to the NFL level where you have different personnel groupings. You're moving in and out. Even though you're in shotgun more now so than ever in the NFL, you've still got to be able to play under center, utilize the play action pass, turn your back to the defense, turn back around and identify coverage. And there's a lot more on your plate than what he's asked to do at Washington State. And that's going to be the adjustment. Tim, uh, great catch by Tim Martin, and he's in for a touchdown. There is a flag down. And that's something that NFL evaluators are going to love about Luke Falk. Is his ability to make those sorts of throws. Holding on an eligible receiver. Defense number 10. The penalties declined. Touchdown. So Martin's in the end zone, and Falk has his first touchdown throw of the day. Talked about his touch. Watch him as he gets the football. He looks off to his right, and he just comes right back to Martin. Martin, the ability to adjust, and they're really high on this true freshman. They really feel like he could end up being the best wide receiver of this group in the future when you look at his skill set. His size, 6'3", 185 pounds. He's a terrific basketball player in high school and they feel like that really translates to his ability to run routes and get open in this offense. In a home on Louisiana and you mentioned the basketball ability the initial plan was that he'd go to Tulane and play both. Washington State came out and offered and he's put together a nice freshman season for him. Fox College Football is sponsored by State Farm, here to help life go right. Love the sky cam, but on a night like this, constant maintenance. Yeah, that lens dried off. Appreciate all the work from our crew. Hey, Buffy, he's got a roof over his head. Easy for him, Eddie O. Who's hiding there? There's Jake. Jake down <laughs> on the ground. Boy, that's playing for the camera. Yeah. All the fellas working hard. They've worked hard all year long. What a crew we've got. Yeah. It's like about work hard, play hard. Yeah. That's a group they that likes that. to have fun. There's no doubt about it. When they do, though, they're at their best. Yeah, that's right. If they're just working hard, maybe not quite as good. Right? You could have that play hard in there, too. <laughs> got to balance. Play for the time. Miles Gaskin will take a knee. Our expectation shattering drive of the game sponsored by Buick came right off of the top 11 plays for Washington to set the tone for the night. Exactly that a tone setting drive eight rushes three passes. It was the ground attack that really we saw all night long 
featured by Miles Gaskin, being able to kind of finish it off. But just domination by Washington up front on the offensive line, on the defensive line. I think in rivalry games, that's where you really make a statement as far as which team is the more physical of the two. And Washington's done that tonight. KJ Carter Samuels replaces Jake Browning at quarterback. Junior from Saratoga, California. Gives it off to Ralph Kinney on first down, and he's got a nice run. This is obviously a great moment for a guy who's a senior. It's on his fourth carry of the season, but from Shelton, Washington. And it's that fun part when you're a part of a blowout win in a rivalry game, your last home game if you're a senior. Get an opportunity to get some playing time for some guys that work so hard to a lot of times service the scout team, put on good looks throughout the course of the year. And this is one of those rewards finally getting on the field and your family and friends one last time. Part of another Washington blowout in the Apple Cup. 41 14 here after a 45 17 win last year, 45 10 two years ago. Kenny again lowers the shoulder. Stopped by Dylan Sherman. So it'll be USC and Stanford thanks to Washington's win tonight. What do you think of that matchup on Friday in Santa Clara? Stanford's such a changeup for any program to go up against because of what they do running the football, using the additional offensive linemen and tight ends. It's, it's never easy. I mean, and to try to prepare for it in a week's time, you don't have as much time to prepare different running schemes and the little nuances off of that. It's tough. And look, KJ Costello, since he's gotten in there, he's really yeah. changed the dynamic of that offense, being able to affect the game, throwing the football. But look, Sam Darnold started to play a lot better football. We know how good USC can be, how talented they are. Always up there in the top 10 recruiting rankings every year. I'm sure they want another shot at Stanford. Bryce Love, really an opportunity, I think, for him to make a case once again on the national stage that he should be in New York. He should be up there for the highs. He's been phenomenal all year. He's played half the season on a bum ankle. Kenny again. And with the third down, you and Bruce have kind of settled on three finalists, though, at this point. Yeah, I mean, look, bottom line, Baker Mayfield played the best football at the most important position. And I don't foresee him not hoisting up that trophy when it's all said and done. But I talk about Bryce Love leads the country in rushing yards per game. And then Bruce's favorite, Saquon Barkley, who he's been phenomenal at times, but probably not consistent enough. What say you, Bruce? Brady, I'm ready to vote for Vita Vea after tonight. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Baker's running away. The only guy who might have had a shot would be Carry on Johnson, just because he's got a big game in the SEC title. At least he can get to New York. Beyond that, I'm not sure anyone's touching Baker. Yeah, you wonder if he hadn't split carries at time. I know Petaway, you know, he's injured, but he kind of split some carries. Maybe if that will allow him to have more production earlier this season. Maybe if Carryon Johnson would be in the conversation a little bit more. He's been the best running back this season, in my opinion, in the SEC. What is with Washington State taking these timeouts here, using all three of their timeouts to force the punt? Next weekend, can't wait. Super Saturday on Fox. All starts with TCU and Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. Then a little bit of a basketball preview of the Big 10 championship, Ohio State and Wisconsin before the Buckeyes and the Badgers face off at 7 Eastern on Fox in the Big 10 title game. Super Saturday next weekend. One guy we didn't mention but should is freshman running back Jonathan Taylor yeah. for Wisconsin. He's been incredible this year. We all know the identity of Badger football is to run the football and these come in and Provided just that, you should get more consideration too of being a part of that trophy presentation. We'll see though. I mean, it seems like at least the prognosticators in Vegas have one guy as a heavy favorite, and that's yeah. Baker Mayfield. Joel Whitford's punt. Makes a good bounce for Washington. Down to the six yard line. What a job Chris Peterson's done. You think about since he got here in Washington, 
he's kind of transformed this program. It's no surprise other schools would want to try to lure him away. When we talked earlier about Tennessee potentially looking at him as becoming their head coach because he provides stability. And the guy's a winner. He's done it at Boise. He's done it at Washington. got a chance in the bowl game now with a win to have his eighth 11 win season in 12 years as a head coach he's done it at different conferences too and I, I can't explain how hard that is to people because you're recruiting versus different teams you're playing versus different schemes and talent and he's done it in multiple ways and there's something to be said for that um, he's got a good thing going here in Washington See a number of guys in the Pac-12 kind of stayed put. David Shaw as well. Yeah. The job he's done at Stanford. He started out originally in the NFL and then essentially looked at people talking about maybe one day he'd make that transition, but he doesn't see a need to. Bonk over the middle. That's Tim Martin. Chris Peterson, a coach's son, but he said he had no plans on being a coach when he was growing up. Wanted to be a psychologist. Studied that in college at UC Irvine. Uh, wound up a coach. Third down three and Falk with Martin going up to grab it. You've seen some flashes here in the closing minutes. Why they're so high on this freshman. Has natural skills that you know translate from the basketball court to playing wide receiver. You see there going up high pointing the football. He's got good hand-eye coordination, but it's, it's really the ability to feel a defender when he turns his hips and how to get open and when to get open. Like right there. Martin again. That's why I always wish more kids played multiple sports because they do kind of play hand in hand. And him understanding zone defense versus man-to-man -man defense in basketball translates onto the football field as far as how he gets open versus man-to-man -man defense and press coverage versus zone coverage. He's got a fuel for all that because of that background playing basketball. Here's Patman. And that will do it. All Washington. And I said UC Irvine. UC Davis product. Chris Peterson unbeaten in Apple Cups and Washington has won five in a row in this series eight of the last nine and with the win Stanford will represent the North against USC in the Pac-12 championship on Friday. Complete domination from the start in this game. An 11 play touchdown drive to set the tone and. Defense making life tough with a pass rush on Luke Falk and the takeaways never really was in doubt. USC with the week off this week. I'm sure they feel like they're sitting pretty. A chance to recuperate, recover. Now take on Stanford in the Pac-12 championship game. Bruce Feldman has Coach Peterson. Coach, since Mike Leach has got rolling in Pullman, nobody has been able to dominate him consistently like you guys have. What have you guys been able to do that no one else in the Pac-12 have? Yeah, I don't know. The kids play hard. We got turnovers. We can run the ball a little bit. You know, those are always a good recipe for success. It's a top 15 defense you face tonight. You run for over 300 yards without LeVon for most of the game. Miles ran wild. What impresses you the most about Miles? Yeah, he's a heck of a player. I mean, if he's, uh, you know, you give him a crease, he's going to find it. And he's really, really strong. And he's deceptively fast. I mean, he, he does all those things. He's a heck of a player. We saw LeVon at the end of the night in a walking boot. Uh, Dante Pettis was also sidelined. What can you tell us about their status going forward? I think they're going to I think they're going to be OK. They got ankle sprains and we got some time to get healed up. So hopefully we get him back. All right. Thanks, coach. All right, Bruce. Thanks, Coach Peterson, for the time. As Washington again takes the Apple Cup. Speaking of Miles Gaskin, Bruce has tracked him down. Miles, you guys really rolled on these guys. Over 300 yards rushing. You went for almost 200, four touchdowns. What was clicking for you tonight? Um, just the way, it, way it, I don't know, just football. You know how it goes. And sometimes you have a good day, sometimes you don't. So this happened to be one of our good days, and we have fun with it.
This offense is pretty banged up, and then you lose LeVon tonight, and he's on the sideline. What's going through your mind when he goes down? Uh, just do it for him. That's my that's my big brother, and uh, just go after even harder for him and him and Dante and all the other guys that have, that have been hurt. So it's just one of those things where you just kind of keep on growing. It gives you a little bit more fire, a little bit more chip on your shoulder. I know you guys have this streak going in the Apple Cup. Which is sweeter, winning the Apple Cup or knocking them out of the Pac-12 title game? <laughs> At equal, I don't know. Shoot, it's just a game. It's fun. <laughs> so. All right, thanks, Miles. Bruce, you stumped him. Something that Washington State couldn't do. Almost 200 yards on the night. 41-14, the final score. We'll be right back to Seattle with more post-game coverage after these messages. Never in doubt 41 14 the final score and really it's not been in doubt the last few years when these teams have gotten together Washington over the last four meetings averaging a 41 to 14 win exactly the outcome of this one is Washington in effect sends Stanford into the Pac 12 championship game Washington State second year in a row they come into the Apple Cup with a chance to win and go to the championship and get completely dominated well you just saw the formula for success I mean when you get that many turnovers you can generate them into points and unfortunately forces Washington State even to be even more one dimensional yeah. than they already already are when you look at how they really comprise this offense that's pass happy but it allows the defensive line then to tee off on your quarterback and you got to give credit to this Husky defense. The back end is so good at being able to take away mistakes that you make and convert them into turnovers and points and big plays. And we saw it early on with the interception by Falk, then scrambling Keyshawn Beria knocking the football out for the fumble, and then again, a tipped interception to Turner. Washington just dominated this game. They did it really with a three-man rush for the majority of the night. And, and if you're Washington State, you've got to be frustrated by it because you've seen it time and time again in the Apple Cup, but something's got to change in the future. Unfortunately, for those seniors, the people moving on, it's not going to be the case for them. Fifth consecutive win for the Huskies over the Cougars next Saturday. You looking forward to this at all? Oh, I can't wait. Oh, they're going to be awesome. Super Saturday on Fox. Big 12 championship game gets the day started at noon Eastern as Oklahoma tries to punch its ticket to the college football playoff against TCU. Could be tough to beat a team twice in one season. Big Ten Championship follows later that night. Ohio State and Wisconsin. Thanks for joining us. So long from Seattle.